rich history of Fort Abraham Lincoln spans hundreds of years and connects several generations of people from all walks of life. What makes this place so important to North Dakota? Find out next on Discovering Fort Lincoln. Hello and welcome to our very first episode of Discovering Fort Lincoln. Throughout the series, we'll introduce you to little known facts about Fort Abraham Lincoln that are both interesting and entertaining. Hold on a minute though. Before we delve into the little known facts, I think it's important that we give an overall history of Fort Abraham Lincoln. Oh, that sounds good. And if we're going to start with the history, we might as well start with the oldest part of the history. And that would be the Mandan Indians living at the Honest Lamp Village. Let's go check it out. The Mandan settled in the Heart River region in the mid-1500s. Honest Land was established in 1575 and was one of ten villages in the area. Unlike the other tribes on the northern plains, the Mandan earned their livelihood through farming, which led to the development of a large trade network with neighboring tribes. During their occupation of the Heart River area, the Mandan trade network spanned the entire North American continent. For over 200 years, the Mandan people experienced a golden age during which their tribe and culture thrived. But in 1781, all that changed. In the winter of that year, smallpox appeared in the region for the first time. An epidemic swept through all the tribes on the northern plains, but none were hit as hard as the Mandan. By the end of that year, The Mandan lived at Onislant Village for over 200 years. That's twice as long as North Dakota's statehood. But from the time when the Mandan abandoned Onislant and North Dakota became a state, there's a very interesting story here at Fort Abraham Lincoln, and it all began with the coming of the railroad. As Manifest Destiny spurred construction of transcontinental railroads, military posts were commissioned to protect the railroads from the native tribes they encountered. In 1872, the Northern Pacific Railroad reached the Missouri River in present-day Bismarck. Fort McKean, a two-company infantry post, was constructed across the river on a high bluff to protect the railroad from the Sioux Indians in the area. From their blockhouses, the 17th Infantry watched the survey crews progress westward across the landscape, keeping a wary eye fixed on the horizon for signs of attack. The infantry foot soldiers were at a constant disadvantage in their skirmishes against the agile Sioux horsemen. To better protect the railroad, Congress commissioned a cavalry post to be built down the bluff from Fort McKean. In the spring, construction began on the new post, Fort Abraham Lincoln. The new post became the home of the 7th Cavalry under command of Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer. The regiment arrived in the fall of 1873 after returning from the Yellowstone Expedition. Tragedy struck in February of 1874 when General Custer's home burned to the ground. Luckily, he and his wife escaped unharmed. A new house was constructed in the spring of 1874, and General Custer and the 7th Cavalry remained at Fort Abraham Lincoln until May of 1876. On May 17th, General Custer led the 7th Cavalry out of Fort Abraham Lincoln as part of the Dakota Column for the Centennial Campaign. On June 25th, General Custer and the 7th Cavalry engaged the largest pan-tribal gathering of Native Americans in United States history.
Fort Abraham Lincoln remained active until 1891 when the government officially decommissioned the post and it was abandoned by the military. All in all, the military was here for less than 20 years. Uh, the next 100 years focused primarily on the preservation and development of Fort Abraham Lincoln as a historical site. After the military left, local settlers from the surrounding areas came to the fort and dismantled all of the buildings using the materials to construct their own farms and homes. In 1907, the area became Fort Abraham Lincoln State. In 1933, restoration of Fort Abraham Lincoln became a project of the Civilian Conservation Corps. The CCC remained at the park until 1942 and is responsible for reconstructing the blockhouses of Fort McKean, five Mandan Earth Lodges, the construction of the Visitor Center, and the placement of the cornerstones around Fort Abraham Lincoln's Cavalry Square. The torch of the CCC was later picked up by the Fort Abraham Lincoln Foundation when the organization financed the reconstruction of the last home of General Custer in 1989. Reconstruction of the commissary, barracks, granary, and stables were soon to fall. Didn't stop there. It also reconstructed six earth lodges in the Honest Land Village and created an interpretive program to provide tours of both sites. Today, Fort Abraham Lincoln is the flagship of North Dakota's state parks, seeing over 120,000 visitors every year and containing the finest interpretive program in the region. Well, there you have it. Fort Abraham Lincoln history in a nutshell. Now that you know a little bit of the overall history here, next episodes will delve into the little known facts of Fort Abraham Lincoln. See you then. And remember to visit Fort Abraham Lincoln where history comes to life.